Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. And in this What is Wednesday, I'm going to be covering what is unit testing or what is a unit test test uh, because there's a little bit of confusion over testing I haven't actually covered anything with testing ever on this channel and that's and that's got to change because uh, uh, really testing is such a huge important part of web development in general so uh, that is something that you will be seeing more of on this channel so to get into it I wanted to talk a little bit about unit testing specifically because there's a lot of different types of testing whether that's integration tests system testing stress testing performance testing all sorts of stuff the one i want to cover today specifically is unit testing and unit testing can be kind of confusing people see the word thrown out a lot like what is a unit test right at the end of the day your code is broken up into units right and you might think of these units as maybe like a function or a class or just various different things in your code that do stuff and we're going to actually go over a specific function and unit test here in a second. And what a unit test does is it essentially just confirms that that bit of code is doing what it's supposed to be doing. And unit tests can certainly save your butt along with a host of other styles of testing. We will be talking more about what are the different types of testings and other what is Wednesday video. So uh, like I mentioned, uh, unit test tests a specific unit of your code to make sure that it's working. Uh, you could think of this in non-web development or non-coding things uh, as a door, right? Let's say we have a door in your house and that door has a specific function. It's to open and close. Or when you turn the handle, the door should open and you should be able to shut the door as well, right? Well, unit testing, you would write code that says, hey, when I pull the handle and twist the knob, the door should be opening or it should open. And when I do the same thing in the opposite direction, the door should close. And then if for some reason that door ever stopped working, those tests would fail. Now, unit tests might seem pointless in a vacuum. You might be thinking this is a ton of extra work just to make something uh, confirm that it does what it's supposed to be. I mean, I write good code. My code will always do what it's supposed to do. And that is not necessarily a great mindset because what unit tests allow you to do is allow you to make changes and updates to your code in all sorts of areas, whether that's the implementation of that particular unit or that unit along with other units or whatever, it allows you to make changes to your code and have a understanding that it's going to work without having to actually manually check it. Like imagine you wrote a toggle that toggles a navigation on your menu uh, or on your website, right? It just toggles the navigation. And I don't know if this has ever happened to you, but well, maybe you change something somewhere down the line. You move a class name here or there or something like that, or I don't know, some code gets modified and then all of a sudden you go to use your website and the menu's broken. You say, oh, oh I gotta go fix that menu, right? Well, with a unit test, you would never actually have to check any of your site because if you wrote good tests, your tests would let you know if something was going to be broken. Like I mentioned, unit tests are just one way to test your code, such as integration tests, which are also extremely important. We'll go over other things like that. So let's talk a little bit about some of the libraries that you might use for unit testing. And you would need a library to test your code. Now, I'm going to be speaking on this in the terms of JavaScript libraries. That's that's primarily what we do on this channel here is JavaScript stuff. So for a long time, Jasmine was the unit testing library. Uh, and Jasmine is still a great option. Uh, it's, it's a nice library. It allows you to easily test your JavaScript. Um, here's AVA. I should mention I'm on a raygun.com blog post right now. Raygun is a, a website that allows you to uh, sort of catch errors on your website. Um, this is not sponsored by Raygun, by the way. I just found this post here. I thought this was a nice little recap of all all of the different modern frameworks here. Uh, we have AVA, which is a minimalistic testing library. I have not used this one, uh, but allows you to do things like snapshot testing, 
it looks like it's trying to be highly opinionated and minimal. Okay, next we have one called Tape. Uh, it's also the most minimal of all the frameworks, okay? Uh, but again, I haven't used this one. Another option for unit testing your JavaScript. Now, into the big boys, we have uh, Mocha, which has been long a popular library for JavaScript testing. You will see a ton of tutorials that use Mocha, and Mocha is a great way to get your code tested. And lastly, we have a library from Facebook called Jest, uh, which has become very popular due to its integrations with React, although Jest is not just for React testing, you can test it with anything, right? So uh, these are some of the options you have, and let's get into like what a test looks like. This is a example is from Jest's website itself. And here we have a function that simply just adds two numbers, A plus B, right? And then in our test, we're looking at this code and we're saying, okay, so we're going to describe what we're doing. It's we're describing the add function and we're expecting it to, it should add two numbers together. And then so our code that actually does this test is this expect line. And so we write an expect, we say, hey, we expect that when we run our function add with these two numbers, that this is going to be the result. Okay, so now this is not a tutorial on Jest itself or not a tutorial on even writing unit tests. I'm just going to be talking a little bit about it. But as you can see here, when we run this test by hitting the play button, it's going to tell us how many of our tests have passed. You can see that we have one test where it's this, it should add two numbers. This is the test. And the result is, hey, yeah, when we added one to two, uh, we expected the answer and we got three. Now, there's a type of development called test-driven development where you write your tests first and your code second. That also could be a topic for what is Wednesday. But let's go ahead and actually see how we can break this test and then how we can modify our test to actually have it be a little bit more useful. So in our add.js, we're returning A plus B. But right now, this test is just expecting the result to be 3. So if we return three out of this function, rerun this test, uh, you can see it passes, right? And let's go ahead and now write a second expect, okay? So you would expect that when you added two and two together, that the answer would be four. Now, if we run this, you're gonna see our test fail because the function is always returning three. Now that three passed this one right here, but it did not pass this expect and therefore our test fails. So testing can really open up how you think about your code in general. Okay, if I remove this return three, if I remove that return three and hit enter, all of our tests are going to pass nice and clear. Our code is working. Our tests are passing. So as you can see, a unit test is simply describing one unit of our code. In this case, a very simple add function. In other cases, it might be a single React component or maybe a function on your server or anything like that. A unit test is simply going to test a unit of your code and let you know that it's working or not. So if you're interested in learning more about testing in general, please let me know. I'm considering doing a series on Jest uh, with React and GraphQL and some of that sort of stuff, or maybe just a general series on testing, uh, considering uh, we haven't been talking too much about it on this channel. So if you're interested in that, let me know in the comments. Uh, check out some of this testing libraries. I would even just head, if you're new to testing in general, I would head to uh, facebook.github.io forward slash Jest and click on this little or repel it and maybe just mess around with this function and this test. This is a nice little environment built here that's nice and easy for you uh, to, to, you know, learn the way to land a little bit here. So this video is not covering the pros and cons of testing too much. Uh, just know that if you're working on any sort of project that is going to be public facing, you're probably going to be want to write tests for it uh, and cover your code completely with these tests. A lot of people talk about why it's important and you should definitely listen to them, okay? So as always, this is Scott with the Level Up Tutorials. In the next What is Wednesday, we're gonna be covering more and more types of testing. So we're gonna get over integration testing, which is a different type of testing. By the way, I'm also using a new microphone on this video. Uh, so if the audio is not perfect, I'm still, uh, you know, getting the lay of the land here with this microphone. Now, if you want to help support this channel, head on over to leveluptutorials.com and you can become a Level Up 
Love Pro and get access to some of these new series that we have available. The latest series on Level Up Tutorials is Pro Gatsby, where I teach you all about the static site generator Gatsby. This series uh, has been really well received. I'm getting a ton of comments about how everyone uh, is just really, really enjoying it. So if you want to build really, really, really fast sites using React, check out Pro Gatsby. It's available for purchase or available for pro subscribers. There is 25 videos and it is excellent. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.